Hello and welcome to the very first review that I'll be doing on my channel. I've been doing a lot of how-to videos, but I plan to do some reviews going forward from here, um, you know, as I expand my fleet of planes and helis and quads. So if you like what you see, subscribe, and that way you'd be able to catch up on all the reviews and how-tos that I do on RC-related stuff. As some of you may know, I'm heavily into the Graubner ecosystem, and uh, this happened from the day when I saw the Polaron chargers out at Toledo show many years ago. I was out there, saw it, liked what I saw, bought it, used it, and then was so impressed that, with my own money, went and bought into the actual Graubner radio control platform. You know, so I bought an MZ24 with receivers and etc. etc. and later upgraded to the MZ32 that I currently use. Now that all said, in today's video I am reviewing the all-in-one flight boards and these were provided by Graubner. So just clear up front, Graubner USA provided this to me specifically for a review. With that out of the way, let's talk about what we have here. So uh, in front of you you'll see an old frame I have that I'm reconfiguring and uh, on it I'll be fitting the S1038 flight controller board and connect it to the 4-in-1 Graubner S3088 ESC. And I'll uh, talk a little bit about what these bring to the table. I'll also put in some links in my description to this note these are not affiliated links, so uh, feel free to click through on those and go and take a look at what I'm doing here. So going on to the features that these controllers bring to us. First off, as you can see, I, the flight controller, the S1038, has a uh, receiver bolt into it. And I, I really should say transceiver because uh, the Graubner flight controllers all have telemetry bolt into into their system. On top of this receiver that's built in, you have some SBUS inputs on, on the board as well. And what that allows you to do is to fit a uh, additional receiver to, to this. So uh, think of it as a satellite receiver that'll, that you could use for um, redundancy if you're so inclined. Very nice feature to have. As I mentioned, telemetry is built into these things. So yes, through the connectors on the bottom, as you can see here, we have uh, the pins that provide us the ability to connect to the four in one board in the bottom. And that four in one board has the ability to send through voltage and current uh, capacity back to the flight controller so that you can then transmit it back to your radio and do some things, very cool things with it. One of the things that we do with, uh, with that data is set up alarms, for instance, that says, hey, you've used this much of your capacity of your battery, it is time for you to, to come home and land your quad. You know, of course you can use timers. The problem with timers is that uh, they don't take in environmental conditions. So if you have a lot of wind, you might not make it back. Or if your battery, for instance, was not properly charged or is getting old, you're not gonna get the same flight time out of it. So timers can get you in trouble. Capacity and voltage levels definitely is what you wanna to use to, to alert you when it's time to get your quad back on the ground. All right, so having said that, let's talk about the other features of the flight controller that you need to have. Um, of course, the very first thing and what makes your quad fly is the accelerometers. Um, the gyro and accelerometers on this uh, board is provided by an ICM20608 chip, 16-bit analog digital converters, and provides great stability to your quad. I'm not going to go into detail on that, just you'll see it if I fly it, very stable in flight. The board also supplies uh, inputs or uh, controls to connect to uh, smart audio devices. So it has support for smart audio built into it. If you don't know what smart audio is, that is the ability to control an external VTX or video transmitter that also supports smart audio. And you can then set your channel as well as the transmission power of that VTX. 
very cool to have. And of course, with Groudner, you can then do it straight from your radio, which is really nice. All right, we also have a bunch of other connectors here, and the four on the corners here are RGB connectors. Those connectors allow you to connect RGB LEDs so that you can put your own type of RGB LEDs on your quad, for instance, on the arms if you like. And pardon me, you can control the color uh, of those LEDs. You also have a, another channel on here for a servo. So you can, if you had a uh, camera and you wanted to adjust the angle with a servo, I don't have it on here, but you have the ability to add another servo on here. So you can do all kinds of things, including um, angle control on a camera, for instance. Also very, very handy to have on your board. And then, last but not least as far as these controllers go you have this one here that allows you to add the optional GPS controller on there and you can see I have mounted on my top plate here is the GPS and parameter board and uh, that connects through a little connector on the bottom that connects to that connector okay this connector is also where you update the firmware for your flight controller so through that connector I just showed, there's a little input there and you connect your uh, programming card to that with your PC and you can update the firmware. The GPS allows you to do waypoints and, and return home type of programming on your flight controller. That is achieved through the use of uh, software that currently is, only runs on an Android device, sadly. so. Um, hopefully, some stage in the future, we will have the ability to use our MZ32 radios to do waypoints, but right now you need an Android device to, to set your waypoints and upload them into your flight controller. Anyway, so the board, as I said, very nice headers in the bottom, plugs directly into the 4N1 ESC in the bottom. This ESC that, I'm ha that I have mounted here is the 30 amp version. Note that there are uh, a number of other options on Gartner's website that you can use. There's also a 15 amp version of this four in one board. And in both cases, they have another option that allows you to do 3D. So you can choose the 3D version of it. And the 3D version will allow you, of course, to fly inverted with your quad if you're so inclined. That's pretty much all I wanted to say about these boards. Note that the connectors for the motors are really nicely spaced, very big enough to, to use um, 16 gauge wires to connect your motors, uh, specifically on the 30 amp version that I have here. So uh, you can run up to 30 amp steel your motors through those wires. And the ESCs themselves have um, BL Heli firmware on them, or the, at least the the shareware or freeware version of BL Heli, and uh, they provide the ability to choose from as uh, PWM, one shot, multi shot, and D shot or digital shot if you like, allowing you to do much finer and better control of your motors, so a lot quicker response time from your motors. And of course, that is really achieved by the high speed um, controller that's on here, that's built into the board and the high level or high end FETs or FETs that's used to, to switch those outputs. The board itself is uh, 36 by 36 with 30.5 millimeter hole to hole distances. So if you needed to know what that looks like. The boards do come with some uh, rubber grommets with them. So the flight controller itself has these uh, little rubber grommets. There are no other hardware in here. So the actual bolts and nuts that you need, you will need to provide yourself and uh, make sure that you get nylon ones. I didn't have any nylons on hand, so I'm using metal, but um, since I have good insulation with the grommets that I'm putting in here, it allows me to do, do that and get away with it. When you, oops, when you fit all of this, make sure that you align the holes properly and just push it down and there you go. Anyway, so there is my uh, my quad assembled, very easily, very clean connection and it's very small footprint so you can really fit this on pretty much any frame that you're interested to use. 
and, it's, and uh, as you can see I'm, I don't have a VTX video controller here I have one on order hopefully it'll come from China some stage or another and then I'll update uh, you on that one and do a little bit of review on how that VTX works with the smart audio if you have any other questions or any uh, comments please post them below and I'll get back to you anyway again like, subscribe, and I'll talk at you next time.